Pirate by Robert D. Cardona and David Mitten. It was the end of a long, hard day in Big City Port, home of Captain Star's seven tugboats. There was just one last job to do, be done. Ten cents, one of Captain Star's two switchers, was the first of the tugs to arrive back at the Star Pier. So Captain Star asked him to tow a barge across the harbor to Scuttlebutt Pete, the dredger. Normally, Ten Cents was an a eager worker, but this job was to help out two of Captain Zero's tugs, who were working with Scuttlebutt Pete. Captain Zero's five tugs, the Zed Stacks were rivals to the Star Tugs, and Ten Cents was not pleased to have to help them. About time, snapped Zug, as Ten Cents drew the barge alongside. I was told you didn't need this equipment until the morning, said Ten Cents. Where do you want it? More by the old key, sneered Zug, if you're not too worn out. He and Zip sniggered as Ten Cents pulled the barge away. Ten Cents towed the barge round to the old quay and docked it by the derelict piers. All right, you old tub of guts, he muttered. You can settle here for the night. As he unhitched his tow line, he thought he heard a noise nearby. It sounded like another tug. But when Ten Cents looked around the place, it seemed deserted. I must be imagining things, he thought, moving away. A moment later, Sunshine, his best friend, and the Star Tugs, um, other switcher, appeared. Hold up, Ten Cents, he called. You heading home? Sunshine, cried Ten Cents. So it was you. Was what was me what? asked Sunshine. Oh, nothing, replied Ten Cents. Come on, I must be tired. Side by side, Ten Cents and Sunshine steamed away from the old key back to the Star Tugs Pier. But behind them, in the growing darkness, something was hiding. That night, everything was quiet on the waterfront. The Starfleet and the Zed Stacks were safely docked. Nothing was moving. Nothing except one shadowy vessel that slipped silently through the water, unseen, unheard. The stranger moved along the piers. No one heard the sound of the ropes or the quiet purring of his engine. As he untied Ten Cent's barge, Eat and stole softly away into the mist. Early the next morning, Zip and Zug arrived for work and found the barge missing. Hey, where is it? cried Zug. I told se Ten Cents to leave that barge here, Zip. I always said those star tugs couldn't be relied on. Ten cents will catch it from Captain Star, smirked Zip. He will when I tell the captain, said Zug gleefully. They ran to, into ten cents just in front of the Star Pier. Hey, you! cried Zug. Captain Star wants me, said ten cents, trying to get past. We want to see him too, said Zug. You didn't deliver our barge. Of course I did, said Ten Cents indignantly. Well, it's not where it should be, said Zip. I left it by the old key, said Ten Cents. You saw me. Saw so you take it that way, said Zug. You've double-crossed us, said Zip. Ten Cents moved forward angrily. I have not... He snapped, you take that back or I'll... What's going on out there? Captain Star's voice roared out. Zug cut in quickly. Ten cents didn't deliver our barge last night and... I did, 
cried Ten Cents. "You know I did." All right, that's enough," said Captain Star. "I've already got a complaint about this. I'll take care of it. On your way now," he ordered the Zed Stacks. Zip and Zug seen the way, grinning. Glad to see Ten Cents in trouble for once. Captain Star spoke sternly to Ten Cents and then ordered him to go and work with Scuttlebutt Pete for the rest of the day. Ten Cents was furious, and but he could do nothing. I hear you lost the barge," said Scuttlebutt. The harbor gossip. As Ten Cents pulled up beside him, Ten Cents scowled at him. Grampus, the midget submarine who had been listening, emerged from beneath the water. "It's a mystery," he said, looking wise. "Grampus," cried Ten Cents, "what do you know about it?" "It's all over the harbor," replied Grampus. "Everybody knows." Ten Cents frowned. Scuttlebutt Pete joined in. The more who know about it, the, the quicker you'll be in the clear. I am in the clear," snapped Ten Cents. "Get that clear." Zack and Zebedee, two of the Zed Stacks, are passing by. Tempa, tempa," called Zebedee. Ten Cents made a move towards them, and as they passed, on their way, laughing. Leave them, Ten Cents," advised Sunshine, coming up. Captain Star's got another job for you, but I don't think you'll like it. It's more work with the Zed Stacks. Oh, that's all I need," groaned Ten Cents as he steamed away. For the next few hours, Ten Cents put up with the stream of jeering from Zack and Zebedee as they taunted him about the missing barge. By sunset, he was very angry. Until the mystery was solved, he would be under suspicion. Captain Star was puzzled. Ten Cents was one of his most trusted tugs. It just wasn't like him to lose anything. That night, Grampus was restless. He decided to go for a look around the harbor. He was worried about Ten Cents. And hoped he might be able to help clear his name. As he crept across the harbor, he thought he heard something. He moved towards the sound, and suddenly a large tug appeared, steaming straight towards him. Just in time, Grampus dived beneath the water. The tug passed above him, missing him by a fraction. As Grampus resurfaced and looked back, he saw the tug disappearing into the mist. It was towing another of Ten Cents's barges. All night, Grampus searched for the pirate, but the mist was so- was too thick. And all night, the thief was at work stealing barges. The following morning, Captain Star and Captain Zero called together the Starfleet and the Zed Stacks. Captain Zero and I have had a meeting," announced Captain Star. "Missing barges is a, is a serious matter. We're going to get to the bottom of it, right, Captain Zero? We've got a scheme to catch this pirate," said Captain Zero. "We've decided to set a trap," added Captain Star. Captain Zero continued, "Certain barges will be used as bait." They'll be fitted with flares that will go off if the barge is touched. Never mind, stolen. So this is the plan," said Captain Star. "Tonight you'll all be out in pairs, mate, in silence, ready for action." While the tugs were being told the plan, Grampus had gone out exploring again. He went back to where he'd lost the thief in the night before. To try and pick up the trail. Got as far as here. What is? What about this old warehouse? It's possible. Hasn't been used for years. He muttered. As Grampus peered round the gloomy warehouse, 
He heard voices. All right, you've done well so far, Apache, but we think you still owe us one. A villainous voice sneered. You're going back on your word, another voice replied. You said that was the last barge I had to take. It's the thief, thought Grampus, as he recognized the tug from the night before. Sea Rogue, he's the pirate. Keeping just below the surface of the water, Grampus looked around the rest of the warehouse. He saw the missing barges, and he also saw an old, de decrepit, sad-looking boat suspended up out of the water. The villainous voice was still speaking. You get us one more barge tonight, or you know where the old boy will end up on the seabed. It's too risky. Argu argued Sea Rogue. One more tonight, roared the villain. Deliver it by midnight, or it's goodbye to him. He nodded it towards the old boat. Then he and his accomplice disappeared into the darkness, leaving Sea Rogue and the old boat together. Don't do it, said the old tug. It's wrong. I can't leave you here with them, said Sea Rogue. You heard what they'll do to you. Tonight will be the end of it. Silently, Grampus slid out of the warehouse. Dear, oh dear, he thought. This is a sad state of affairs. That night, the plan to catch the pirate was put into action. Top Hat, the smartest of the Star Tugs, was getting himself organized. Barge in place, flare said to go off. Now I thought we were go going to be in pairs. Where's my other? He saw a warrior steaming up. No, oh, no, not warrior. This is our post, Tuppet, grinned warrior. Of all the tugs, I get the clumsiest, muttered Top Hat to himself. Be great if you and I catch them, eh, Top Hat? said Warrior excitedly. Top Hat sighed and resigned himself to a long night as they settled down to wait. Over in the dock area, Sunshine was cheering up Ten Cents. Hey, come on, Ten Cents, he said. I know you didn't have anything to do with the missing barges. Zip and Zug are just trying to make, make something of it, that's all. Thanks, Sunshine, replied Tencent, but it makes me angry not being able to prove it. I'm sure Captain Star believes you, Sunshine assured him. Don't pay any attention to those Zedstocks, they're troublemakers. I don't care about them, said Tencent. It's the other stars, they can't be sure it's not me. As they settled into their positions, Grampus appeared. Grampus, hissed Ten Cents. Get out of here. You'll give us away. We're laying a trap for the thief, whispered Sunshine. That's why I've come to see you, explained Grampus. I know where the stolen barges are. I've seen them. Right, cried Ten Cents. Let's get that pirate. He'll be sorry he crossed me, I can tell you. Wait a minute, Ten Cents, said Grampus. It's a bit complicated. He explained the situation to Ten Cents and Sunshine. Sea Rogue is being forced to steal against his will. The real villains have got the old tug and they'll sink him if Sea Rogue doesn't steal barges for them. We must get to the pirate, Sea Rogue, before the others. There's no time to explain to them, said Ten Cents. You're right, agreed Grampus. Follow me. As they slipped away from their post, Zip, who was keeping watch at, with Zug nearby, noticed them leave. He and Zug, sure that Ten Cents was up to something, 
They set off after them into the mist. Ten cents and sunshine hid near the old warehouse. They saw the two villains go inside, then waited to spring their trap. A sea road came steaming back to the old warehouse. Ten cents went into action. Heave to, sea rogue, he ordered. You're cornered. You can't escape. Quickly, he and Sunshine explained to Sea Rogue that they knew about the old tug. We must save him, said Sea Rogue. He's my uncle. They're holding him prisoner and making me steal barges. Even if I get one more, they might still sink him. Help us to help you, said Ten Cents, and we'll sink them. The sound of an engine came across the water. Quick! whispered Ten Cents. We must hide. Sea Rogue let them out of sight just as the two said stacks appeared through the mist. It's Zip and Zug, hissed Ten Cents. They're going into the old warehouse. I've got an idea. Grampus, you go to the old warehouse entrance. If the villains leave, you save the old tug. Grampus submerged and moved off. Over by the old warehouse, Zip and Zug were trying to pluck up courage to go inside. Just a quick look, said Zug. No, Zug, begged Zip. Let's go back, please. Come on, said Zug. Stay close. As they entered the murky darkness, Zip peered round. Hey! He cried. The stolen barges! Great! We're heroes! Suddenly, the warehouse lit up by two pairs of huge, glowing green eyes. A voice roared out. Hey! What are you doing in here? Help! cried Zug. The pirate! Zip and Zug shot out of the warehouse as fast as lightning. Outside, Ten Cents, Sunshine, and Sea Rogue were ho were hiding. Wait till I say, whispered Ten Cents. Seconds later, the villains came racing out after Zip and Zug. Three, two, one, charge! Yelled Ten Cents, and he and Sunshine and Sea Rogue shot forward and trapped the villains between them. A moment later, Warrior and Top Hat arrived and helped take the villains away. Inside the warehouse, Grampus had freed the, the old tug and brought him over to Sea Rogue. As dawn broke, the tugs gathered together. That's what I call a good night's work, said Ten Cents. Thanks a lot, Ten Cents, said Sea Rogue. I won't forget this. It's the it's what the least I can do," said Ten Cents. "You're heading up river." "Yes," said Sea Rogue. "Pirates aren't very welcome here." "Come on, Uncle. Let's get you home." As the two of them set off up river, Ten Cents watched them. "I'm really sad to see them go," he said. Grampus turned to Ten Cents. "Well, I'm off." Thanks for all your help, Grampus, said Ten Cents warmly. He caught sight of Zip and Zug and pulled out in front of them. I don't know what we have done without your help, he said sarcastically. Somebody had to chase those villains out, said Zug. Weren't you just a little bit scared, asked Sunshine. Nope, said Zug. Nothing scares us, does it, Zip? And he set off backwards. Forward, Zug, forward! cried Zip as Zug shot back straight into one of the barges that the stars had fitted with a flare the night before. Whoosh! As the flare shot up with a loud explosion, Zip and Zug yelled out in fright and fled across the harbor, terrified.
<laughs> they move pretty fast, but when they're not scared, laughed Sunshine. Eh, ten cents? They sure do, grinned Ten Cents. The end.